Hello, KCIW listeners, and welcome to Curry Cafe, where we put together a panel of volunteers and guests who discuss various topics from whimsical and fun to more serious subjects. Welcome to another hour of the Curry Cafe. Curry Cafe is a show where we have several of us sitting around the table discussing a subject. It can be any subject, something that comes to mind or something we've prepared for. And as always, I have gathered three of the greatest experts on this subject. And the subject today is going to be uh, the progress that women have made in the last, say, even 100 years or maybe uh, less time than that even. So if, if we can start out by introducing ourselves. Did you say your name? You did, didn't you? I prefer to remain. I think you did. I, I prefer to be anonymous. Okay, I think that's a good plan, actually. <laughs> Hi, this is Shirley Hyatt, and on my left is... Hello, Rick McNamer. And for our women's progress, we have two men and one <laughs> woman, but we'll do our best. On the last day of uh, March, which is Women's History Month, I is believe. It? I don't know. I hope I have that right. Well, if it was, it's the last day. It's the last day, but here we are. <laughs> we okay. got to cram it all in there then, right? Okay. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know how old you have to be to be able to remember when things weren't like they are now, but certainly when I was in high school in the in the uh, early 60s, there was no such thing as women cops unless they were a special unit that worked with juveniles or something like that, and there were no women driving bulldozers or tractor trailers or doing any of those traditionally male jobs. Conversely, there were no uh, male stewards on an airplane. And while we're talking about airplanes, there were no women flying my 747, which always had me a little nervous when they first started doing it. But um, in other words, women have made a lot of strides in the last... I guess as far back as you want to go, but even if we went, say, to the 1900s, when well, I, women were basically uh, an appendage to their husband. Well, a phrase came to my mind when you were talking, Ray, and it was the, the weaker sex. And I think so much identity has been given to women that they don't have the muscle mass that the male form has, traditionally, let's say because it's not absolutely true all the way around. But women have always been considered, in my opinion, to sort of be under the thumb of, of the man who sort of knew better. You know, he, he was given the, the right to choose for her because lord and master, you know, there were all these phrases that I can think of where, where the male played a superior role. And I think when it comes to bearing children, of course, it's the woman who is taking care of the of the infant and raising the, the children, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of those roles have expanded so that men have taken on a lot of non-traditional roles, but women will always be the ones who are impregnated and who carry the child. So that is a role that you're never going to change that, all old silly movies to the... <laughs> To the good, didn't Arnold Schwarzenegger um, have a baby in one of those movies? Um, but anyway, so I think I think there is that that we always have to recognize that through the eyes of the world, that is who the woman is, and um, and that's not a bad thing. It's just nature. That is how it is. But what is interesting is why the male has such dominance over. The woman, and I will just lay that at the feet of most religious thought. Anybody want to? And we're is, bigger and stronger than you are. Pardon me. We're bigger and stronger than you are. That may be where it started even I, before I think religion. So. Yeah. 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 Traditional roles. I mean, as we go back, uh, it just yeah. You're right. That's the way it is. Yes, men and women are different. Uh, but for it Thank seems God. like to be an inordinate amount of historical time. The men have kind of taken advantage of that. Yes, women, uh, you know, birth the children, uh, take, well, we should both take care of the children, but before, years before, it was usually the woman. But 
lately, it seems like a lot of religions, if you will, and powerful other, uh, mostly men, keep encouraging women to have more children, whether they want to or not. Um, and, of course, let's throw in the latest, these abortion crazy arguments, but and they're trying to take that away, take away a woman's right to choose. Here in this country, that's what blows my mind. You can almost see it in some of the third world countries where the, where uh, women's progress is not going well at all. But but here in this country, there's been a backlash ever since, oh, I don't know, I'll call it the, what, the Gloria Steinem days. I mean, she can be a lightning rod, but I, I think she did a, did a good thing. It was there was a time where women had to start struggling for their rights. You know, Ray, you talked about uh, stewardesses. I happened to watch it. It's an old program. Flight on attendants. CBS. What's that now? Flight attendants. Well, we were stewardesses at one time, I though. So. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, are yeah. you talking about the, the two-hour show that just was? I think so. But yeah, it was American about how the struggle that these women had. I mean, they were doing a wonderful job, but they had, you know, the men were making the rules. You could only be... So tall, so uh, your weight had to be just right. Uh, oh, and you had to be white. You could throw no. that in too. That no, changed. That, that show had had uh, black people on. Yeah, but, but it took a while. Yeah. Oh, it did. Okay. Oh, yeah. It took a lawsuit to get one black woman hired. So My sister in law anyway. back in the day was a, was a flight attendant and she couldn't go to work or she had a, a band aid that showed if she cut her finger or something like that. Okay. And they also, at a time now, couldn't be married. Yes. Some of them were secretly married, but yeah. once the airline found out, you know, just these little examples, but there's still a big backlash against women's equality. But, you know, you mentioned third world countries, and, and uh, if we, we go back to uh, the information the archaeologists somehow or other figure out from, from digging up bones and stuff, and it's in a lot of cultures that women participated in the hunt just as much as the men did. Um, but... I, I don't know if there's a country or or, or, or a, a culture around the world where women are equal to men in any, or, or they, they certainly have um, different jobs. I think the word equality is really a misnomer because we can't be equal in every way. I just don't think we can because of the nature of the physiognomy. Is that what I'm trying to say? We are physically different and sure. we have... Maybe not a different temperament automatically, but I, I, I think it's wrong to just assume that in every situation it's interchangeable. Sure, a woman can do that. Sure, a man could do that. And that, that isn't the problem. The, the problem is whether a woman is capable of doing something. That's, that's really the question. Is a woman capable of flying a plane? If she's properly trained, of course she is. You know, um... But there are other roles where she just physically may not have the musculature to take on certain kinds of really, you know, like, like loading boxes at the dock, for, you know, for example, or, or something really, really strenuous. But intellectually, a woman is capable, and in some cases maybe a little bit more <laughs> capable, of seeing the picture and analyzing what's going on and speaking truth, et cetera, et cetera. But her opinion is still a little bit devalued. And there was a time when you'd say, oh, well, you know, women, they're just too hysterical. You know, you can't, you can't put them in a, in a powerful role because, you know, women, you know, they have that time of the month and then they go crazy and you, know, you better be careful. And, so and, there's, and men have used that yeah, to, absolutely. Their, to the man's advantage. Yeah, and, and so the, the question I always have had is, is why is that why has that been allowed or promoted all through time except for like you say Ray there are in history there were women who were the queens or running a country or whatever looked down with more equality but what but is the I need just, I don't that, know of, to keep of, woman in her place you I, know I don't know of any culture going back a few years I mean it, it is now but where historically Women have done the same work as men. Uh, generally, it was the men brought home the animal and the woman skinned it and made the clothes and cooked the food and took care of the babies and all that stuff. And the, the men were out 
killing the whales or whatever. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do we want to go down that road? <laughs> yeah, I don't think. Yeah, even uh, the later whaling. I don't think there are many women on whaling ships. So. But where we are politically today, it it's still no matter whose side you're on, women are not looked at as capable of running a country. And we know historically that there have been very successful women in government. Uh, Indira okay. Gandhi, I'm thinking of, um, who was the chancellor of Germany recently? Angela Merkel. Yeah. And, and, you know, it isn't that women can't do that kind of job. It isn't. It's just that we still traditionally think no, no, no. We don't. We don't want a woman running it. And when it comes right down to it, it is an intellectual job. It is a a job that it's not because it's stressful physically. It's about how smart you are, how well equipped you are to solve problems, etc. And, and I think in a lot of cases, women are better at that. Oh, and we have so, usually somebody running for government right now who thinks that you have to be a a powerful person that people pay attention to and sit up straight when you're talking, uh, things like that. Um, why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> I, I doubt I that can. Trump would ever accept the idea of a woman being a president. Or a, a well, but he's a weak man who is using his weakness to strike out at other people and bring them down. You know, strong men don't do that. Yes, I I'm mean, confident. I know. You mentioned Not before either. about uh, loading uh, boxes uh, on the dock. I think less and less there are jobs, even warehouse jobs, where you actually need strength. There's a machine that picks them. That's true. Moves, right? I worked in a, in a field for 20 years that was traditionally male-dominated. Uh, in 1976, I joined the Alaska State Troopers, and at the time, I was hired. Uh, I think we had two, and then there were two in my academy that was after that. We had one and two in my academy. And that job was, was everybody said, oh, they can't do that because we would go out to villages by ourselves and, and arrest people and things like that. And, and there was concern that a woman would get hurt doing that. And my experience working with women troopers, well, there, there was one type that, that was bad who tried to prove how macho she was. Mm -hmm. And she would get in trouble all the time by being how macho she could be. And then there was another one. I had a woman who was still my friend, who was my partner, who could talk to people, use your words kind of thing. And mm -hmm. People think the cops every night are out fighting all the time, and the, the bad ones are. But if you're any good at all at calming a situation, you're not. And uh, I, I think that women have been very successful in the troopers. Well, the, the thing is, women can be successful at just about anything, given the chance, but I don't think that we should always say we could always do every job that a man can do. I mean, I wouldn't want to do some of those things, even if I was offered an opportunity. That doesn't interest me. That's not where I am. But getting, getting back to the traditional roles, more and more we see that men are saying, you know, I, I'm, I'm part of this family. You know, I helped to raise this child. I'm going to take some responsibility here. And so there are people in our culture who are more aware of, hey, I'm part of this. I'm, I'm the male part. Of, she's the female part, however you want to say it. And we both have brought this child into the world and we're both responsible, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so now we've got working women out in the, the world and they're not at home and they're trying to find a good babysitter and at that, that's the point where I want to stamp my foot and say, doggone it, if you want to have a child, think about what that looks like. I don't really want to turn my child over to somebody else to raise because I have to get out there and earn money enough to pay for the babysitter. It doesn't make any sense. But there, there are women who are not interested in being at home raising their children, whatever that looks like. And I think it's too bad. I think they're, we living in a, we're living in a time where if a woman really wants to be at home with her child, she might also be able to work through a computer, a job of, of some variety, or she might have a part-time situation. So women don't have to stay in traditional roles. They have much more opportunity. But we're not there yet. We, we've still got this in our heads that 
that this is her role, this is his role, these are, you know, and who who's going to break that? I don't know. Is uh, is Biden going to pass the wand over to Kamala and then all hell will break loose in this country because there's a woman? You well, know, I, uh, crazy. Back to women raising, uh, now I'm trying to collect my thoughts here real quick, hold on. Um, the times they are changing. That's yeah. that's what's happening. A, a single income family hardly can work anymore. So the fact that a woman wants to have a career in all uh, women, uh, let's say a couple, the, the woman wants to have a career too, which is her right and she should. These babysitter jobs like you're talking about, um, that's just another, maybe a job for another woman. I mean, that's just kind of the way it is. Is it is it the perfect way? Well, maybe not. But you can't, I don't think you can deny a woman who wants to have a career and wants to raise a family also. Um, it's just it's very hard part of to what's do. going on. It's there is the economic in, in sense of the, you need the woman's paycheck, but there's also the woman who maybe, uh, maybe she's a physician or she's uh, in some type of, of, of uh, an important position in any kind of a job. And wants worked her way into that, and wants to maintain that, but also wants to be a mother. Um, that's up to them to make that decision, and it, probably the jury might be a little out on on whether or not the kid needs mom at home all the time. I don't know. Well, I just think that there are more opportunities now for a woman to be able to do both uh, without having to have a forty-hour week or or an eighty-hour week. In some cases, they work practically around the clock. Um, and the reason I bring it up, and this is, this is social, and I could be extremely biased on this subject, and I admit to that, but, but our culture did change. And I was um, raising my daughter, she was eight years old, when I was a single mother at that point. And so I wanted to be at home when she got home from school. So the way that I dealt with that was to become certified as a an after-school care provider. So we lived very close to the elementary school, and these kids who didn't have a mother to go home to because their mothers were off at work came to me after school. So I'd have like six or seven little kids at my house, and I baked cookies every day, I must admit, and um, and was there for these kids so that I could be with my with my daughter. And I saw the difference in those children who who came and they were they were missing their their own family or in one case a, a woman called and said that she'd had an accident and she couldn't come to pick up her child could i keep them overnight well of course that's naturally i had to do that but the point i'm making is there there are ways to be available to a child that you're raising and not just give up on it altogether and get caught up, caught up in a career so that the influence of that child is coming from someone who's not even a family member. And I know I sound really old-fashioned, but I think that parenting is something that has become almost obsolete for a lot of people. They're just too busy. They expect someone else to do the child rearing. Well, I don't know about expect, but it, it just it might be a necessary thing that they have to do. That's a choice, too, and, and right. necessary is... I mean, I was a child of the f 50s, and our family was a little unusual in our Sacramento neighborhood because my mom worked. I think she was... I can't remember any other mom in my neighborhood working, but that's just the way it was. Even when you were little? Oh, yes. But her sister, my aunt, lived a block or two away. That was our babysitter. Well, there so you go. We were fortunate yeah. to have... Family, yeah. But I don't feel any loss that, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I loved it when my mom came home and my dad, <laughs> but, you know, uh, that was just what they felt they had to do. But yeah. again, it was it was unusual in the 50s and probably the 60s where most mothers, I believe, were stay-at-home moms. I think that, that where I'm a little bit hung up in all of this, and I'm, I'm realizing I'm beating this subject to death, but I'm I'm really curious about you know, there is the point of view of the breakdown of the family unit. Well, the breakdown of the family unit looked looks like 
mom and dad are not home. Mom and dad are not available to children. And, and, and yet we're expecting people to continue to have children and even encouraging them to have children. I mean, if I were a young person, the, the last thing I would do is bring a child into this world. Here, here. And so, because I think the world is, is, has gone crazy. But, but I, I feel very strongly that a lot of kids have not had that sense of self that they have been plunked down in front of the television or given a computer to, to um, play with or games to play or whatever. And the interaction of the socialization is just missing. And so it's easy to maybe politically draw people over into one point of view or another because they, they don't have that talk across the, the dinner table with their Adults, am I am I getting too far off track here? <laughs> Let, let's go back a little to how how did this uh, all start? A, a, a lot of religions, I don't know if all of them, but a lot of religions, major religions, the man is the boss. The man is yep. the head of the family. The man makes the decisions. And um, is is that the way it is in the Bible? Is the, is the man always the in well, charge? <laughs> the woman will, no. uh, will be subservient to the husband. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, I'm certainly no biblical scholar, but yeah. that's the way what little yeah. bit I read. It's to pretty honor, ugly. To and honor again, we, and like obey. We talk, yeah. Like we talked about, wasn't, you know, Eve was the first, everything's her fault. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, again, pardon me for my lack of biblical No, but, but, but honor and obey is in the marriage uh, vow, right. right? So the male is the head of the household. And not only sub, well subservient, yes. I have, I mean, misogyny, subjugation of women seems to be pretty, pretty throughout that uh, book. Yeah. Maybe not the New Testament. Don't know much about. Well, but either. but we're we're going back and looking at you know how how did we end up here? How did we end up here? Because a a lot of people in our country specifically, and maybe in England and other places, where where women are saying you know. We, we contribute to the society. How come we don't have a voice? We want to be able to vote. And so it was women who fought to get the, the vote. Now, you may say, oh, I wish they'd just shut up. You know, I mean, well, go, go back. Some people still say that. Yeah, exactly. Some They're, political, powerful people still yeah, say that. Yeah, say, hey, w- women should not even be allowed to vote. Well, what is that about? You know, can we nail down why it is that the male of the species feels so much that the woman should be under his thumb. Do you have any? I don't have any. No, that? because I've um, uh, more or less depended uh, on the women I've been involved with to tell me what to do or show me. <laughs> not I, tell I me tell what you, to do, but I've been mean to, to, <laughs> you know, to, uh, to, to kind of check me at times. Hey, I don't think you should do that. You know, that I can recall that being said to me many times. Well, and my personal, my wife and I, now I never had children. She had a son, my stepson. So when we got together, we I consider it was pretty uh, an egalitarian, uh, what, relationship, if you will. Um, and it worked for us. It just worked better that way. Um as a matter of fact, she, I, some men like to be control of the money. Well, I flipped that over to her right away. And thank <laughs> God for that because yeah. that wasn't the best. But, you know, yeah, I, I, I think that's just natural progress. Uh, I have to go back to this backlash these days. I just don't understand it. They, they seem to want to go back to that. Uh, what was that little Republican response with the woman in the kitchen that got, you know, beat up on the air as it should be i mean really what in Who, the kitchen whose choice was that to have her in the kitchen oh, that I was incredible know. well but but see this is what we're talking about is is i don't have a problem at all with a couple saying well whatever people together saying hey i'll i'll cook i i like to cook i'll do the cooking and sometimes the male will say oh i love to cook maybe the best chefs in the world are males i don't know but the point is to get away from labels, to say this is only a girl's job, this is only a boy's job, this is only a male can do this. There are certain things that just fit better, whether it's we're talking about how strong or big or whatever the man is, 
that those are roles that it's okay. Why does a woman even, why does it matter if she wants to do that? Why do we have to tell her, no, you can't? Well, um, that I think that's the issue. Why do we why do we come to a point right now where it looks like there's a move afoot with a lot of people to say the woman should stay home and have as many babies as she can? And I, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but never mind. Uh, but there's a lot of negative energy going to aimed at women. And I just wonder why men are feeling so threatened, because obviously they are. Well, and, and <laughs> yeah, that again, that is still going on. Back to jobs, I, I came like Ray. I came from a male-dominated. I was in the railroad industry working on the track most all the time. And, oh, my gosh, I, it was like the early 80s, I think, where all of a sudden a few women were starting to come in. And now... And like other industries, a lot of that stuff got mechanized, but sometimes we still had to go out there with a pick and a shovel and a hammer and spike down railroad ties. But they, if, whether they did it as well as men, maybe not, but they worked right alongside us, uh, and they did that because those jobs paid a hell of a lot more than going into to being a secretary or something or a Whatever, a clerk. And there's nothing wrong with being a secretary. No, no, no. I but know. I'm just, but yeah. the pay wasn't there. They right. wanted to do right. it, and a lot of those women were single moms. Hmm. Um, anyway, I understood that. And, yeah, they got some, uh, it was some, there were some hard case guys out there that tried to, I don't know about putting, a, putting them down, but overall. But see, see, now, they, where does that come from, though, Rick? Where, where does that attitude come from that says, we need to go and and give these women a hard time because they're, they're stepping in. But uh, and, but what and, is and that my, about? What and, is that in about? In my job, guys prided themselves on being very macho and uh, you know I'm the law and that type of thing. And you you can't have some little girl coming in. And, yeah, but see, to me that that is what is really the nub of the whole thing, that the male feels somehow threatened that a woman would dare to step up and say, well, I'd like, I'd like to do that job too. I'm, you know, I'm capable of doing that. I can learn just as well as a man can. But there's still something built into our culture, or maybe not just culture, into our psyche, that somehow the woman just can't cut it. You know, there's, she's just not going to be able to. And we don't want her around us anyway. Maybe she'll intimidate us so we can't swear as much. Or you know, <laughs> and, put, and, put people down. Maybe she'll get her knickers in a twist, you know? In, in my academy, like I said before, there were two women. And one was, I don't know, 5'9", five, 5'10", five, something like that. And the other was about maybe 5'6", and kind of slightly built. And she worked, the, okay, the, the, the other woman, the woman who uh, was not a little thing, Kind of laid back and re and relaxed a little bit, as minorities were capable of doing in those days, saying, "Hey, you can't fire me, or I'm here because I'm this, I'm here because I'm that." But this one, the five foot six woman, tried her damnedest to do everything that any one of us could do, and and to the point of groaning Exhausted, and passing out. So. Yeah, she, <laughs> and and th that's how her career went too. That she yeah. was was willing to go on and do it, it would pull her weight, and I think the other one wound up marrying somebody and quitting. So we started this uh, this hour talking about what's happened with women over the over the years, over the centuries. And personally, I think I can speak for everybody here that a lot of this is tied back to religious thought. And so as long as you're in a in a um, a structure, some traditional structure that has to do with the way that you run your life based on your religious thought, then I don't see how we can change a lot of these attitudes because people automatically get defensive and say, well, you're trying to step into a territory where it's none of your business, you know. It's like, how, how can we overcome that without Am I making any sense here with the, the whole idea that this, this is the woman's role? She's subservient to the male. That comes from, from a religious tradition. And all over the world, 
There are women who are not allowed to speak up. They're not even allowed to show themselves because somehow that's offensive. And, and that doesn't have anything to do with um, normalcy. It has to do with a strict religious thought. And it's, and it's violent. It's violent. Those women can be, ser- they can be seriously injured and killed if they have the audacity. And a lot of them have. Yeah. So, so you're not, how, how do you battle that? Um, because. Uh, that's a million dollar question. I don't know. Uh, I hate to go this far, but it's, we talk about the violence. It's macabre. But I was looking at the countries now that still have female genital mutilation. Egypt is one. India is one. These are countries that we're supposed to kind of have a little, what, dealings with. I mean, I, it's hard for me to believe that it goes that far. Now, granted, there was like 27 or 28 countries in Africa that that have that. But Egypt, India, um, gosh, uh, oh, go, gosh, Kenya. But anyway, how how far do, do you have to go to believe in that? It's, is, so it's legal, but is it also widely practiced, or is it just? It's not as widely practiced I, I, in, like, India and Egypt, but it's still there. I watched a show uh, on television not long ago about that, and I, I don't remember what countries allowed it. Because, the reason I didn't is because they went in this home where uh, they were talking to the, I think, like, 12-year-old who had been circumcised and the grandmother and everybody is saying that, uh, you know, this is the way it is. And it was uh, about a six-year-old, I guess. But what is the point of it? Got there. Ah, oh, you're going to get there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and and they literally took her down, laid her down, and held her down and, and did it right there on camera. Oh, and my. the point was I couldn't watch it anymore. I don't know. I didn't learn much from that program because that's about as this little girl is screaming and hollering and carrying on. I don't know how that happened. But getting back to the religious thing, a lot of uh, religious scholars now seem to think that that's a good possibility that, that that Mary Magdalene was actually an equal and an advisor to Jesus. And 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 um, had had pretty much as as much power as he did as far as making decisions and things. So. Well, so. We had that then. What happened to it? Well, we, if you watch Ancient Aliens, <laughs> which, <laughs> which a lot of us have, and there's a lot of it that's very enjoyable because I love archaeology and understanding what went on centuries before. But, you know, the, the point is there is, again, a perfect example of the point of view of the people who say, well, no, 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 there are records that show that she was his beloved, that they were actually man and wife, mm-hmm. that they were, uh, that she was honored and um, considered just a- an equal to him. And then people came along and said, oh, no, 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 that couldn't possibly She's be true. And we're going to have to, we're going to have to make her into uh, this horrible sinner, you know. Um, so it, it's like from, from the, the beginning of this Christianity, as most people practice it, I think, um, the female is is looked on as the troublemaker. You know, she's she's the one that does the bad stuff. I'll go on I mean, a lot of that. Yeah, I mean, if the prostitute is going to be um, harmed in some way, you know, let's throw her in jail. What about the guy? I mean, <laughs> he's never held responsible. She's always the one. So it's like, yeah, what is this? It's just traditional. We accept it without even thinking, oh, yeah, she's a prostitute. What about the man that goes to the prostitute? What's that about? Well, I believe in this country that's changed a little bit. They've started to arrest and, and, and put the names out of the men who were. But, but now they're being called sex workers, and it's, I would assume that it's become legal in well, most it, places. It I've always seen a lot of places. It's absolutely outrageous. Who are you telling this woman what she can and can't do with her body? Well, well, now, I, I know that it also, the, the culture around it bred drugs and all kinds of other yeah. things, but it wasn't well, our fault. I know, yeah. Well, that, that might get us into a little bit of, of um, scary territory here, but, but if, the, if the male's urge to procreate, <laughs> which let's just 
call it very simply, um, is that this is how you do it, then that that's very strong. That's very strong because it's like you got to carry on the species, right? So the female doesn't have that same biological urge that the man does. Am I making any sense here? Well, you're the female. I, no, not the, <laughs> not the ones that I've known, except, uh, <laughs> except for some. <laughs> I think couples, I think, the, are we going to go here, but we'll say it. Yeah, the, I think the sexual urge goes both ways. And that's why we've... Uh, but women don't go out and track men down and rape them, do they? Like, well, oh. I'm sure it's rare, but I yeah. do think that they, some of them, they're, they, what do they call them, gigolos? I mean, that does happen. Uh, 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 on a normal scale, maybe not. But my point is, and this goes back to the women's reproductive rights. Let's say a a couple, young couple or old couple, they just want to have fun, right? That's part of the whole deal. And if by some way they made a mistake, the the condom didn't work or something, they they should both have that right to not have that child. And the religion part comes. Oh no, it doesn't matter. The only reason that you have relations is to have a child. That's but been... That, yeah, that's all of that control thing again. Well, sure, yeah. power and control. Yeah, because it doesn't make any sense. And that kind of goes by, I was just thinking, how far then, we talk about progress of women. Well, how far have we really come? I think we've come a ways, but with the, the things that are happening now, especially with women's productive, reproductive rights here and the other of topics I was talking about with the mutilation, it's just horrible, or making the women, you talked about uh, covering their whole body. They can't be seen. Why do you think this is happening now? Do you have a point of view about why that why this is happening now that, that women are being excoriated again? You know, this, this going the back... The Republicans going took back. a chance that they would come out victorious on that. But what is the point of it? I, do they, again, I think the backlash... The, the religious people, the, the conservative, mostly men, but there's a lot of conservative it, women that it's feel the same again. way. It, uh, I think of what was the lady Phyllis Shafley back yeah. in the 70s or 80s, you know. She came out hard and heavy against women's rights and, um, well, all of that stuff. And we have a few, you know, uh, now that are doing that, so... I don't know. That's... But I wonder what real benefit they they think they're gaining by telling women that that you know you if you dare <laughs> to become impregnated by somebody and and you don't want that child that well we'll basically throw you in jail you know we'll put you in prison because of that and the man the man always gets away is is kind of you know the woman is still the target she is still the target. And I, I wonder if if this is, as you say, a backlash of saying, well, the women have just gone too far. You know, they've Heard just that. got too many rights. They, they're they butting into the man's world. They don't belong there. Uh, we don't want women in the Congress. We, you know, we want them to go home. I'm, I really love some of the traditional female and male roles. I really do. I, well, so I, do I. I think grew a lot up of people do. There's nothing wrong with them, and you ought to be able to choose them. And it all comes back down to that thing of why are you persecuting these people? Why can't we just get along, so to speak? Why, why are men predominantly so intent on vilifying women? Why is that raising its ugly head again? You well, know? you said it. You Control. said they ought, to, they ought to be able to choose. Yeah, absolutely. If, if, if a family wants to, like I said, if the, if the wife wants to be a corporate CEO and raise a family and take the, I mean, she should have that. The family should have that right. Right. But uh, it's it's still, sometimes it's still going backwards. So well, we have we'll come see. a long well, way. What's we'll that? see what happens. We'll see what happens yeah. because this is a very interesting time that we're in right now. Yeah. I I don't think anybody's seen anything like it except maybe in the 30s when Hitler was coming to power. But... Well. Um, we may be in that same position right we may now. Maybe. Mm-hmm. But I, I think that that overall, um, most women, that's really a blanket phrase that I probably shouldn't use, but but the women that I know, they're they're not fighting. They're not out there arguing with people and 
you know, raising their arms and shouting, give me the rights and do all the, it, it's just sort of like, you know, leave me alone to do my thing, you know, basically. Um, don't tell me that I can't and, and allow me to express myself in, in whatever way is um, valuable to me and to, and, and to basically society. And if we're all getting along in society, then there are all these roles that are interactive that women can play, that women can play. This is who they are. I mean, I, I think that people forget that, that at the time of the birth, there are sometimes children who are born with both sexes. You know, they, they make, the doctor makes a choice with the parent. Do you want this to be a boy or you want it to be a girl? You know, um, we, we come into the world not with this stamp on us already that says, and this is what you will do for the rest of your life. No, that's, that's, uh, that's when it begins. You know, the little kid that says, I want to wear a dress, but you're a boy, you know. <laughs> I don't care. I like girls' dresses. Well, maybe that guy is going to be just as masculine as anybody else, but he happens to like pretty dresses. Oh, no, we can't allow that. We must, uh, we must knock that idea out of this guy's head. It's, it's, just, it's just crazy. We both have male and female to us, and one is predominant, and that's what we're acting out here. A uh, program note, I have a, um, I'm doing plans right now for a program of the future on that very subject, sex you, change operations and, you, and the gay community. But do you think that it's true that we both have male and female attributes and that we one is predominant over the other? Yeah, if you look into, to the anatomy of uh, the male and female uh, organs, they kind of come from the same thing, and, and there's... Um, I can't think of the words right now, but there's it's be. made from the same material during the development, and one compares to the other. You know, I I almost hate to use one person. Well, to that I think I, I grew up in the Sacramento area, so that's where Rush Limbaugh started out. Oh boy! <laughs> and I used to listen to his program. It, yeah, it ticked me off, but it yep. was listenable. And he was the one that came up with the feminazi, uh -huh. if you remember yeah. that. Yeah. And then he ended up going to New York and, well, we all know about yeah. that. National, didn't they, good God, they awarded him that Medal of Freedom. Oh, that yeah, was Trump that did that. Oh, yeah, Trump that was, did that. Yeah. Now, oh, it was, to me, that's a If I had one of those, thing. I would have turned it in. Well, uh, that was sacred. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyway, but he was successful at that. So at the time, feminism, feminism, feminist, that, I, it was Still a dirty that word, a, yeah. What's that? It was a dirty word. Well, I always have seen it as a good word. We know why that they had that movement. And and if, from what I've been reading, still most women, especially younger women, still uh, like that term and believe that they fall into that category. But he really turned it his uh, shtick, if you will. It was successful. I have to admit, sometimes he was funny. He was just, he he had that audience. Um, but that was, uh, that was a turning point, I think, where that's where a lot of people were laughing at women like that and then making them into a, a character. I don't know. But sadly, he was successful at doing that. But that feminazi term has been, I haven't heard it lately. He's I, gone. Well, like, uh, he hadn't used it for a long time. He had, his, 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 his deal was about every six or eight months or so, he would say something totally outrageous okay that would get him on the national news yeah yeah and they talk about general motors has dropped them this is dropped them. that's dropped them. but he got another million listeners and general motors and everybody else came back sure, sooner right. or later anyway yeah. So, uh, yeah. the last one of the last ones he did and that i think it might have gotten him in some trouble because i don't think he ever did this outrageous thing again was uh something about uh, birth control for college girls or something and Oh man! And yeah, the, he made some really stupid statements. Yeah, the lady. No, I, I. She's having so much sex that we have to provide her. Like, he wanted the lady that was that did the birth control to broadcast her having relations. Oh, is that right? It was something as crazy as that. Uh, pardon me if I'm not 100, percent but it, it was pretty uh, pretty radical. But that's what's predominant in the in the news cycle today is the most outrageous things. And, and what people who are following 
you know, the, the, what's happened to the poor Republican Party is it's all based on outrage. It's, it's just, let's, let's uh, put out the ugliest, nastiest, meanest thing that we can possibly say, and those people out there, we're going to trigger them in some way. And that is what has happened. I mean, you say something ugly, and I say, yeah, that's how I've been treated. Oh, boy, I, I sure hate that. Yeah, you're right. There are. And then you've got my attention. Now you're going to feed me all my anger and, and my unhappiness and how it's always somebody else's fault. And that's where we are. It's somebody else's fault. You're okay. It's the other people that are sticking it to you. And so that that's where we are politically and in this culture that somebody's got to be the enemy and we're going to make them just as bad and ugly and horrible as we possibly can. And we're going to drag women into that too, because it's very easy to do. We can always pick on the weaker sex. We can always do that. And so this is where we are, you know, with um, the, I'm trying to think of the right phrase here, but it's like, Reaching into people's higher self? No, this is reaching into their most base self. I'm going to trigger you in the place where all your ugliness lies. And that's where we are. Say it outrageous things with some charisma and some humor, and you got it made. Yeah, and people love, evidently, knowing that there are other people who think all these ugly thoughts just like they do, so they don't feel alone. They're like, yeah, somebody out there is just as mean as I am, you know, or I've, I've been given permission to act out now because look at that, it works uh, somehow. You know, it's it's a psychologically very, very interesting. But um, in the process with all of that, the the woman, of course, gets short shrift. <laughs> so <laughs> she she gets picked on again, um, made made to feel that she's not equal somehow. And, you know, the, the truth is, it's it's not a comparison. I don't want to be you. You don't want to be me. Well, why can't a, why so, can't we why can't we be ourselves? You know. Well, going back to when I got this job with the Alaska State Troopers, uh, affirmative action was really hot in those days. That was really being pushed by everybody, <laughs> and we never had a quota that I know of. But we had to sh- demonstrate what we had done to hire minorities. And it was an awful thing because in some cases, uh, well, and when we we um, were trying to get get more uh, Native Alaskans, Eskimos, and Indians in the job, and some of these people live in villages where there were no cars, they never drove in their life, and they they used to say they went from the Stone Age to the Space Age in a generation. It wasn't quite that quick, but it was not far from that, and there was no television, and a lot of them did not know a whole lot about what was going on in cities like Anchorage and, and stuff. Like that. And if, um, if uh, I don't know, if they could pass the qualifications, pass the tests and things like that, they would get a job, as would women. So the way we hired was we had three lists. We had a white male list, we had a minority list, uh, Native, uh, no, no, a, a women's list and a minority list. So if 10 women took the test, you could float up to the top of that list with very low marks and very low um, test scores. So you were a lot more likely if you were a minority to get the job. And then when they hired them, frequently we, we kept them on for quite a while until they just screwed up so much that we had to get rid of them. And I'm not saying anything about these people not being able to, to do the job or something like that, but the, the way we chose them, we just said, oh, good, we can put that one in here, well, fill that slot. And affirmative action is, yeah, it, it gets beaten up quite a lot, and, and, and there's, there are reasons for it. But I think there are also reasons why it initially came about. Yeah. Because I've, I've never just, liked people a, wouldn't hire, hire a black person yeah. or a Hispanic or an Asian or a woman. Yeah, it was a. It was still a, now the 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 they were interviewing one of the uh, <clears throat> bridge workers that was on the bridge that collapsed, uh, and yeah. he said people would drive by and say, "Why don't you go back to Mexico?" You know, and he says, "I didn't come from Mexico." But I, right, I, I can't believe that stupidity exists. Well, unfortunately, well, it does. Be because people are being taught. 
to to feel that way. They're being taught not to like people. And that's, oh yeah, well, the, that's, I forgot with it, those people are poisoning our blood and bringing disease and <laughs> rapists and murderers, and we're ent- emptying the uh, sane asylums in Mexico. I have to throw a quick. I think surely you were talking about women not only physically but being able to stand up because sometimes men love to berate and. Now, I don't watch this show hardly at all. I've just seen clips, and I hope I get her name right. But on Fox, there's uh, the five or this other show with, to me, four crazy people. There's this one um, progressive, if you will, Jessica Tarloff, I believe is her name. I've seen clips. She battles those. It's her against these other four. And if you have a chance, she is just a strong, uh, intelligent woman who can back up her stuff. And that's rare to see on a show like that. Yeah. So Jessica Darla. No good. I'm, I'm glad there is something going on, but, you They're know. Kind of a hero of my heroine, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. But, you know, as a culture, getting back to what you were saying, I, I think the attempt to make everybody equal is basically the problem because we're not. You know, we're different. Each, each one of us is a little bit different. Um, I'm a musician, Ray is not a musician. He has other skills. I have this talent. You have that talent, et cetera, et cetera. The, 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 the trial to say, we've got to make everybody equal, that's ridiculous. You're never going to make everybody equal. But we need to stop discriminating, discriminating against people to accept that we are all different. I mean, I don't look like you. I don't look like you. Vice versa. It's this attempt to, well, we got to go out and get this group of people to come in because, why? Because we don't want to look like we're discriminating against them. What if they don't want to join us? You know, what if, what if they don't want to be on our team? Um, we have to have a quota of so many people. Why? To show that we're not discriminating. And it's, it's, it's sort of a, a back boomerang kind of thing going on because really, if we didn't establish it all that way, if we really did have love in our hearts for our fellow man, then it wouldn't occur to us not to include them. You know what I'm saying? It's it's all kind of phony in a way to say, well, we need this many to be in the Asian. We need this many and we need this many, all to show that we're not discriminating. Well, hello, maybe they don't want to be here. You know, maybe... Well, Maybe they're happy where they are. You yeah, know? but again, I think we're still. This is this whole thing is a work in progress. Oh, I mean, absolutely. Basically, the equality started. Well, let's say, well, even at the early 1900s, I would the suffrage movement and all that. And I might be off on my dates there. Well, but, this is not a test. You will not be tested. Well, on good because I would okay. fail that test. <laughs> but, but um, it, we're still working on it. Again, like these quotas. I mean, there was a reason to put them there at, at first, I think, because people were being because uh, people were being shut out. Basically. Yeah, exactly. So, and yeah, we we obviously still have issues and problems out there. Yeah, but see, that's my point. Those are those are artificial barriers that have been established. What what's artificial? Uh, to to not want somebody, to not want somebody to be in your circle, so to speak. It's like the, the, the little kids in, in nursery school and, and in kindergarten, if there's um, a little black girl and a little Asian boy and whatever, the little kids don't automatically hate each other. They don't. They have to be taught that it's not okay to associate with that child by the parent. who said. Mm-hmm. So these are artificial barriers that we set up against each well, other. That, and that will come from the parents. Of the there, there you go. So, so what is this need for people to be superior. Like now we're dealing with the people who, well, only the white people and only the Christian people are supposed to live in America now. Who says who? Says who? You know, I think... Um, but that's the move afoot. I, I watch very few weekly shows, uh, friends and shows like that, but I do every now and then follow a series or two on Netflix, and I'm I'm watching one right now that's... I won't even say because it's kind of a dumb show, but I like it. <laughs> but they have black people and gay people, and it's not even part of the plot. In fact, two of the key people in in this uh, in this one show I'm watching are black. And it, other than the fact that they're looking at black people, it doesn't come up at all. 
Uh, and the same thing with gay people. Uh, I, I think the more that you have things like that going on, um, the more it will become accepted by people who are, who are watching that. And a standard back when I was a kid, loved my parents, wonderful people, but signs of the times, they always told me, oh my gosh, when the races mix, oh, terrible. Oh, my mother thought suffer. that. Yeah. There, I, I've always found out the opposite to be true. And yeah. I've always hoped, and it's happening, more races and cultures are intermingling. I think that's a good thing. Of course it is. Um, when, when I was about six or so, I think, uh, a new family moved in, and the kid was my age, and we were palling around, and my parents said they didn't want me playing with that kid. Yeah. And I said, why? And they couldn't answer. It turned out he was Jewish. Okay. Yeah. Well, now, see, that's a, you're pointing exactly to what I'm talking about. We have to be taught somehow that these, these people who are not exactly looking like us or have a different religious thought, we need to shun them or, or punish them in some way. And that's what's happening today that is so terribly frightening. I don't understand why not more people are, are trying to do something about it. But, but this whole idea that, that coming from not the blanket of the whole Republican Party, but the idea that the woman's place is in the home and she's a Christian and she has as many babies as she possibly can and this is a Christian nation, this is a white nation. And Trump holding up his Bible, the USA Bible, is, is laughable. It's just, I mean, it just better burst out laughing at anything so idiotic that, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. But the whole purpose is to say, we need everybody to be Christian in this nation, and we need them to be white. I mean, give me a break, you know? How, how long are we going to allow this to go on? It's just, it's a joke. It's gone on too long goes already. Back, goes back to, our founding, our, back to our founding fathers who oh. decided that those people, uh, John Wayne actually said something like, that he thought the, the Indians were, were being selfish because they were keeping that land, not letting I've us heard. use it. Yes, that, that's true. That we need a... I, I, why wasn't he ostracized for saying something that stupid? Now they, well, they named an airport after Everybody him. thought he was a, a hero. Yeah. yeah, well... He played one on TV. Well, we're winding down here. We are uh, winding down, yes. We're, so. uh, we were hoping to have at least one other woman. Shirley had to take up the whole oh, thing I, on the progress of women. I speak for all women. I speak for all women. Well, good. Okay. <laughs> so, anyway, yes. Oh, okay. Do we have we have about a minute left. Any I, final thoughts? Yes. I want to say that uh, we're hoping to be live, which means that if you listen to us next time around, you might be able to text us or call, I guess just text, and say, hey, I want my point of view to be on the air too. So it won't just be us, and you'll get a chance to do that. So please do. We'll let you know when we're live. Should be soon, yes. Rick? Uh, well, uh, as I stammer and stutter, <laughs> no, just if anybody out there, we always welcome more people. We yeah. want more people. Uh, yes, if you want to be on the show. We have but and yeah. was, we're always happy to sit out I if don't more be people the out there want to. here talking. Come yeah. on. <laughs> have a different point of view. Come on e down email, to KCIW. E uh, email KCIW.org and say, I, I would like to be part of that show or I have an idea for the show. Yes. Get out there and love your fellow man. Yes, and woman. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so as okay. long as you're well, anyway. Okay. <laughs> so See long. you next time.